Uh, most normal user, this is what they're gonna look at, is they go into a project dashboard and they're like, great, I have a whole bunch of stuff boiled down for me, such as all of the scan data that we've ever uploaded, uh, the SLAs, because you gotta, gotta have those SLAs, um, the specific top high-risk vulnerabilities that I care about, and then being able to have all of the tools available to me to do what it is that I need. So the next kind of most common set of use cases is where we start looking at the vulnerabilities themselves, right? And so the active vulnerabilities page is really the next sort of central place where, where analysts are going to work out of. And what we're doing here is actually pretty interesting. So we take all of the vulnerabilities across all of your different scanning tools, 10 different scanning tools that we're showing on the project dashboard, and then you can go in and we have that all normalized into something we call unique vulnerabilities, uh, <clears throat> charted down and deduplicated down basically by unique instance, right? So if I have 50,000 cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, I just want one cross-site scripting vulnerability and have 50,000 instances of a cross-site scripting vulnerability, yeah. right? That's the idea, right? Because you don't want a, a table with millions and millions of things. You want to be able to start grouping. And we're looking across not just CVEs, but any type of findings, right? So this could be configuration vulnerabilities. This could be cloud, you know, CSPM stuff. We've got compliance yeah. type findings as well. So you can manage all different types of findings in one spot. And then the next step is we're actually enriching all of this data with Mandiant Threat Intel. A lot of vendors say, hey, we're going to destroy, you know, we're going to create a risk score out of all of those attributes. But we worked out a really great partnership with Mandiant where they basically said, you can take Mandiant and just embed it directly into the platform. Yeah. And so we have all of those uh, fields available for analysts and you can start using these fields to make decisions. And then when you start tying that in with our automation, you can make decisions basically over and over again at scale where you could say, hey, I actually wanna prioritize something differently based on the different, excuse me, the different fields available. And so. For example, if I click into, say, like Apache Log4j here, um, I'm going to pick on that one just because it looks the looks the coolest with the with the yeah. Fred Intel stuff, right? Um, <laughs> but this is meant to be the workbench for the analyst to be able to track and triage and do all of the kind of tracking process that is respond, you know, essentially that you have to do after a vulnerability is discovered, right? Just What's the state of the vulnerability? Where does it exist? Where, what is the specific kind of details that caused it to trigger in the scanning tool? What do we wanna to do to that instance of that vulnerability? Who owns it? What's the state of it? Uh, do we wanna set due dates on it? You know, all of those kind of, call it like the manual processes that you would normally have to do and that a lot of people are using spreadsheets for. Um, when you start looking at the threat intel piece, this is where it gets pretty exciting on, on my side because we have all this data available to you Obviously, you've got the NVD information because uh, a lot of people like to use CVSS version two or version three or whatever it is that they, they like to use. But we also pull in the Mandiant data. We have we integrate with this feed called EPSS, which is uh, maintained by FIRST. Uh, it's an open source uh, kind of prioritization score. And then obviously, we've got the known CISA. Uh, it's now called, they've rebranded it to the CISA known exploitable vulnerabilities list. Um, but the CISA bod was the original kind of uh, directorate that they came out with, which is, hey, is this vulnerability part of that CISA list? And is there a due date? And especially if you're a government organization or critical infrastructure, you would like to align yourself with that CISA list of everything yeah. that you care about. And then all of the fields that you could possibly ever want to be able to, to kind of triage off of. So if I'm an analyst or if I want to start building automation into my vulnerability pro uh, prioritization pipeline, it's like, hey, maybe I actually am tracking certain APTs that I care about. And I just want to look at and, you know, raise the risk of all vulnerabilities that are being attacked or, you know, being used in campaigns associated with certain APT crews. Just basic example, but you could use anything, right? All of the vulnerable products that you have, any associated malware, uh, you know, exploit consequences, you know, the Mandiant analysis is all here if you want to read it. Um, <clears throat> and obviously, we're, we're very fortunate to have this, this partnership with Mandiant. And then you can also bring your own threat intel feed as well. So if Mandiant isn't good enough uh, because you have, you know, done your analysis and, you know, there's some limitations that you're, you know, as an organization, you're, you want to kind of work around with different threat feeds, you can bring your own. So for example, you can bring Recorded Future and we have all of the risk rules that, that they trigger that this vulnerability has. Sweet. So that's the, the vulnerability section, right? So the vulnerability section is like the, the source of truth for all of the vulnerabilities currently in your environment. Obviously, if you take actions on those vulnerabilities, they're going to get remediated. So just being able to track what have you fixed over time, over a specific period of time, filtered by specific asset groups, 
And then again, building queries, building uh, searches based on what it is that you care about, and then saving those searches so that you don't have to keep redoing them. So, and then being able to say, hey, I want the output of that search sent to me on a schedule. So let's just say every week I want a update of all the new critical vulnerabilities that are on publicly facing assets that Mandiant's rated as critical. Just, you know, whatever cross I mean, that sounds that sounds like it's worth knowing about. 